it seems like you just had this fucking uncanny thing where like the bigger the game, the bigger the pressure, the more you showed up, like just like, you, you know, I mean, not just in the Super Bowls, but like as the seasons, as things became more and more important, as the pressure got higher and higher, it seems at least from an outsider, from a fan, it's like you became more and more dependable and to, like you were that fucking guy. And I guess I'm wondering like, is you got any, you got any idea why that is, man? And was that something, were you like that as a kid? Yeah. You know, my dad was tough on me, but the, the person who was toughest on me the most was myself. You know, and, and whether it was I didn't want to disappoint my dad or, or I didn't want to, you know, there was certain, I, whatever it was, I was always a fucking tough critic. And, and, and it goes back to that preparation process. Like when you practice hard and when, you know, you go out and, and you don't have a good play on seven on seven and then you have team and you get pissed off about that. And you think it's fucking whatever, but then you have to think back in, all right, I have to have short memory. You got to go back on the track. Like it was like life or death. Like I was like that for a long time that when you get into the certain situations that you practice and you practice at a high level hard all the time, it was like clockwork. You know what I mean? So I, I would have to say it would be the, just the straight competition and the, the, the being toughest on myself. You know what I mean? Like, that's the one thing, you know, I, you could have the best game of your life. And you, I would always still think about that one play. You I fucked up. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? I, yep. could, I could have had a little bit. You were never satisfied. That never satisfaction kind of feeling that you have. I, you know, like everyone always talks about that fucking catch in Super Bowl, whatever it 51, was, yeah. against Atlanta. Yeah. Like, I don't think about that play. I think yeah. about fresh out of halftime. I was a rah-rah guy, and I drop a fucking third down, which I would have just kept, I would have kept running. I would have still been running if I would have caught the ball. Fuck yeah. You know, that's what I think about. You think about the shit you didn't are do. You right. in all are you that way in all facets of your all life? All facets of my life. Very yeah. hard on myself. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's something that you have to learn. Mm -hmm. you know? How does that manifest itself? Like, how do you deal with, like, when failure comes or when disappointment comes? Like, does it come, you staying up at night thinking about it? Does it, like, what, what's the dialogue in your head? Like, what do you say to yourself? Well, you know, everyone has a, you know, everyone has that time where you, you sulk on something. But then, like, I have my dad in the back of my head. Quit like, how the fuck do you get out of this? You got to work your way out of it. All right. Let's just get back to fundamentals. You have to have a short memory, whether it's good or bad. I mean, because there's always going to be another rep or there's going to be another day. Absolutely. There's going to be another play. There, in any facet of life, it, there's always something else. You know, the highest of the highs, there's going to be something else. Totally. You know what I mean? So, you know, just keeping that mentality, that's what I've always really had. You know, like in the most adverse situations, when I was my absolute worst, like in a low point of my life, you, you finally hit that, that spot where you're like, all right, I'm over this. Now let's, let's get into problem solving instead of, all right, we have the problem. We, now we know, we know the problem. Now how do we get the fuck out of this problem? That's right. You know, whether it's, you know, not doing a route right or doing, the, you know, how do I make this better? And, and it just, it comes back into competition. And I, now you're competing with yourself, you know? So that, that's how I always get out of shit. I'm, I'm competing on just trying to win the day. You know, I learned that in New England also, you know, you, you're either getting your better or you're getting worse. That's right. <laughs> there ain't no fucking standing still. How was your day? Did you get better today or did you get worse? You know, so it's, it sounds simple, but it's hard. And that's what my dad always told me. Life's hard, but it's simple. That's you right. know what you have to do. It's not always easy to do it. You got to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to be disciplined. There's going to be things, but you know what you have to do. Everyone knows what they have to do. It's just not always easy doing it. You know, that kind of clarity it sounds like it's like sort of the perfect marriage and the way that you were growing up, the, the way that you grew up, the things that you accomplished and conquered along the way. And then to go into bill check, so like just, just to go into that program, does that, do you think that that system doesn't work for some people? Like who, who, who like clearly there's people that that has not worked out for. What, what why would, why do you think that would be? Do you think there's like some people who like need to kind of lie to themselves or, 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 or can't stand that kind of honesty? Yeah. I, everyone's different, you know? And, and, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I remember, you know, some big name veterans that roll through New yeah. England and, you know, a little later in their career and they're like, what the fuck is this? I can't yeah. do this. What, what yeah. specifically can they not do? Well, it, 
you, you can't follow directions. You know, it, it, it's, it's simple. There's a scheme. There's this. This is what they want to see. This is what you should do. Uh, it's tough. You have to work hard. Right. The right. day's not easy. This right. isn't a fucking walkthrough. That's right. We're here to fucking compete. It, it's going to suck. Yep. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. Right. And if you do all that, when, when it comes to nut cutting time, it's like, all right, let's go play. Yep. You know, I mean, a lot of guys, you know, they, they just, you know, think you could just lace up the cleats and go because that's how it was where they were at or, yep. or in different areas of their whole life. They've been celebrated for so long. They just don't know how to respond. They to don't that know how to of, respond. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, it's, it's different. You know, some people need to be loved up. Some yeah. people need to be motherfucked. Mm -hmm. Some people, everyone's quite, you know, a little different. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, 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 it was like a match made in heaven when I went to New For England. You. It was tough. Well, yeah. and what about, New, I mean, like uh, New England specifically and, and, and Boston, you know, I was telling the guys, so I, I played baseball in college and my, my, one of my best friends, a guy named Sparky Davis from, from, from South Boston, complete fucking nut. Uh, we, we were probably the two biggest underachievers in NCAA <laughs> history. He used to like pitch on acid. And, and sometimes he'd be like fucking, I mean, say he was like a sidearm pitcher, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like, no matter what I called, he would like pitch what he wanted, you know what I mean? And sometimes he'd be fucking great, you know what I mean? Sometimes he'd be, ten, like, you could bring him in four or nothing and he'd lose the game, you know what yeah. I mean? Like hit five batters in a row, whatever. But like, you know, so I hit him up, because I lived in Boston for a long time. I was there when they won that first, I guess it was 2001. Yeah. Uh, 2000, was it 2001? One? Or was it two, yeah. yeah. And I'd never seen... You know, I was living in South Ball. I was living with the, the him and his buddies. And uh, like, is, do you think that's the greatest sports town in the country? I mean, I, I, I'm kind of biased. Yeah, I only kind of, played there, but yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. Like, they don't really have seasons. They have like, there's no fall. So it's like baseball, hockey season, football season, or basketball season. Right. And it's a pro sport town. That's right. You know, and, and what separates them is all the pro sports have had a lot of success in this like chunk of period that I've been there even before me. You know what I mean? So they love their sports. They're tough people. They're fucking blue collar. Blue collar. They're hardworking people. They're, it's cold. It's miserable in Boston. And, and that's how a lot of those people are. They love going home after work, putting on the fucking sport channel, watching their game you know, s supporting their team. And that's, that's the tough people they are. And that's the kind of person I grew up around. That's what my, you know, that's what we were. That's you right. Know, blue collar people that worked hard, that love sports. Um, you know, so it, it's a tough place, but I, I didn't really, in New England, when, when you're with, with, you know, coach Belichick and all those guys, yeah, it's, it's a tough place to play when things aren't going well, but they also, you know, they, they love their, they love their guys, you know, and, you don't really get to really experience it as much as you 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 think you would because you're so caught up in the game. Yeah. And and the coaching staff there at the time, you know, they 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 were so good at making you ignore noise and putting so much on your plate where you had you couldn't think about anything else. You know, you were thinking about getting your body right, you were thinking about you know, what the game plan, the install was, what, what's the third down plan today? What's the red area for tomorrow? Like all these things you were thinking about, uh, you know, so they did a great job of occupying your mind mm. uh, where you, you, you didn't get to see necessarily all the, the great things and the shitty things of, of, of what goes on. And, you know, I, I just know for me, you know, playing, playing high school sports, it was so, it, it was so fucking vital, right? It was like, these are the guys I grew up with. We hated the people we were playing against. My buddy coaches at um, Modern Day and his son just graduated from there, went on, got a scholarship to play at Cal. And he was saying, he grew up in Arkansas. And he was saying how like, you know, back in the day when you play in high school sports, like you fucking hated your rivals. I mean, to this day when I'm in DC, I, like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what I'm doing. If you want a picture with me or an autograph, like, I'm stopping. But if you're wearing a fucking St. Albans shirt, dude, I will not take a picture. <laughs> like, you're taking that fucking shirt off. I won't do it. Like, those are the only people really on earth, I, to this day, I got to say, I hate. I guess, like, w once you get into college, at least, you know, me and my, like, D3 life or whatever, it's like, I don't give a fuck about Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Like, I don't really, you know, it's, it becomes more of, like, a business. And I imagine in the pros... You know, it's, 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 there's such a huge fan base, but I guess, I, I, I guess my question is, did you, when you're playing on these legendary teams and you're like, I mean, I would imagine even, even more so than if you were a Yankee in the, the heyday, like that team, like 
you did, did you love that city? Did you no, not yeah. want to let that city down? I mean, how, what was your relationship to the people of that city? I understand you were sort of separate yeah, from no, them. It was, it was awesome, man. They, they embraced me. I was a California kid, went out there, and, and they... They embraced me and my family. And, you know, when you when you play in Boston, you know, you, you see the you know the Red Sox. Well, they won a World Series when I was there. And then the Celtics won a, a championship and the Bruins won in 2011. There becomes like a competition thing where like, all right, these guys did it. Now we got to go fucking do it because, you know, you know yeah. it, it becomes like that because, you know, there's a standard. And, you know, I understand when what you said when you go to college, you, there's the rivalry, you know, but like, I tell you right now, I fucking hate the New York Jets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and that's just how it was because, you know, Boston, New York is, is pretty gnarly. Big time. It, you know, people get up for it. You know, I res the Giants, are, I, I can respect a little bit about, you know, what the Giants, yeah, they, they had, they held us, they got us twice in the Super Bowl, but the Jets, man, it was a, it's it was a dog fight every yeah. time you played a New York team, yeah. and you knew that. Yeah. You know, you could feel the buzz around the city. You could yeah. feel the buzz in Foxborough. Yeah, you know, you could hear certain things what people were saying, even though you were trying to ignore shit. Uh, especially when social started getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, it was it was awesome to play for you know New England and and and, and Boston. I mean I I grew up in Boston pretty much as an adult. You yeah. know, I, I got there at 22. Right. I left at 34, you know right. what I mean? So like I I know fucking Cape Cod better than I know Lake Tahoe. I know yeah, Boston better than I know San Francisco where I grew up. Like right. you know you become part of the city. You right. go to the games, you support, you know, the Red Sox. I became friends with like Pedroy and Paul Pierce yeah. and you know, Tuca and Sagan, all these guys, like we would all hang out and stuff. Yeah. And, and there's a camaraderie that you definitely feel in that city because there is no college teams. Yeah. People out there, they only that's like right. pros. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And, and, and that's cool when you're a pro guy. Yeah. 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 I mean, every one of these guys that I reached out to, like the Umbros and the Grush, you know, all, the, the only question they have was just like, is he coming back? Like, come back. We just went like, that's all. I'm like, fuckers. Like, really? That's yeah. all you got? And one of them was like, you know, my, my dad's, one of them was, was like, you know, my dad's Jewish and my mom's not. And I'm wondering if, if, if he considers himself the most handsome half Jewish athlete. And he was like, because I think I am. I'm like, dude, it's just, they're fucking worthless, bro. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking worthless, no, I, bro. Yeah, man. I, it might come, I don't know. I, I'm probably not going to come back. We'll see. Yeah, I heard there's a hundred million in the cap next year for the Patriots. We'll see how that paycheck's looking. Let's go. Bro. And you know, I heard there, there's a couple rumors that Brady might be going over there. You know, might be going back. But That's what they were saying. He's coming back. With you Brady. never know. You yeah. know, but I'm content right now with my my life. I love being a dad. I love the the work that I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm on Inside the NFL. I've got a podcast as well, Games with Names. Uh, you know, so it's it's a transition, and I'm I'm hitting those competitive uh, needs through different stuff now. You know, it's not quite football. It never will be football. It never will be, you know, sitting in a locker room with the boys. But you know, I get to go and hang out with, you know, Phil Sims, Ray Lewis, that's right, Brandon Marshall. Michael Irvin and we get to talk ball so you get that kind of locker room sense with that but you know it's tough man I left a lot I left it all on the field bro like did. it was uh you know when, when you can't when you can't go out and do fundamental things and things that you've done your whole life like at the click of your hand anymore yeah. and you have to like get up for it and it becomes work it's not you know not what it was it's it's tough, you know, and it, it hurts you. It hurts you as an athlete when you you throw on the film and you're watching a practice and you're like, man, what the, that ain't me. What the fuck is that? Yeah. Like that, I, I respect the game too much. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my body's feeling good, but yeah, that's good. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think? Like, uh, you know, I, I I was I was thinking about this too the the, the other day. You know, it's like there, there's something I feel like with you, man. That that. Uh, so many people kind of uh, they see themselves in, in you. I think I think like this again. This whole like idea of an underdog and whether you ask for it or not. I think like when we look at people, we look at athletes. Like you, you know, you look at guys like LeBron James or Shaq or fucking you know Ray Lewis or whatever. You look at them and you're like, wow, that's this like 
fucking physical specimen. Like they're almost a different, you know, it's just like a different species of, but like it's, it's, but, but when you think about it, it's like, you're, you're really the anomaly. Like you're real, like guys, your size, like that's really what's fucking absolutely extraordinary. And, 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 um, and, and do you, do you, do you feel that? Do you feel that like people, people sort of, um, have that, uh, root, root for you in that way and sort of see themselves in you? Like, did you, that, 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 that underdog thing, like, did you, did you feel the weight of that? Or are you just trying to do your thing? I was trying to do my thing, but you definitely feel that, you know, yeah. you know, it, you would feel the good with it. You know, people like, Hey man. And then you would feel sometimes people, you know, try to size you up, you know, you go somewhere and they're like, Oh, this guy can do it. I can so, fucking do yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so every time I walk into a boxing gym, like I think I can whoop the punisher. Yeah, exactly. Like, part of me is like, all right, fuck you. You know go. what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it goes both ways, but you know, I never really worried about that. You know, I, 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 I love that if you can help someone and inspire someone, Fuck that's yeah. awesome yeah. because ultimately, you know, that's what carries on and you know, you're, you're going to be done doing something, but if you can give knowledge or you can give a story or some inspiration to a kid that like was my age with, I needed when I saw, you know, Jerry Rice or, or when I, when I saw, you know, Doug Flutie, I was a fan of Doug Flutie, an undersized quarterback, like, that's the cool thing about this whole thing, you know what I mean? And, and especially now that you have your kid, now you're you're really worried about what, what your kid. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's everything. And, you know, every, it's awesome when people, you know, it's awesome that people support and and, and relate to you. Um, but you know, it I, you're just living, bro. That's right. You That's know right. what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's got a story, you know. So.